Hello friends, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Dr. Neetu Jain, working as Associate Professor at Indian Institute of Public Administration, New Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the topic, Introduction to Training and Development, Concepts and Significance. Before starting the discussion, let's have a look at the contents. Introduction to Human Resource Management, Introduction to Training, Definitions of Training, Training as an Open System, Objectives of Training, Need for Training, the main areas in which training is provided, Types of Training, Training Need Analysis, Designing a Training Program, Evaluating the Training Effectiveness, Who is in Charge of Training, and Summary. Human resource management is the most important element in an organization. Of all the resources, manpower is the only resource which does not depreciate with the passage of time. From the viewpoint of an organization, human resource represents people at work. It is considered as one of the most important asset of an organization. The effective utilization of all other resources depends on the quality of human resources, hence the need of human resource management. Of the various functions of human resource management, training and development is an important function as it develops proper job related attitudes and prepares the employees for higher responsibilities and tasks by enhancing their knowledge and skills. Training refers to a planned effort by a company to facilitate employees learning of job related competencies. In the words of Phillips W. Medgar, one of the management's most important function is to train people for their jobs. Training is the process of increasing the knowledge and skills for doing a particular job. It is an organized procedure by which people learn knowledge and skills for a definite purpose. The purpose of training is basically to bridge the gap between job requirements and the present competence of an employee. Training and development are the tools to enhance productivity and effectiveness of the employees. They have acquired great importance in the recent years. Training is the learning experience in that it seeks a relatively permanent change in an individual that will improve his or her ability to perform the job. This is a definition given by S.P. Robbins. Definitions of training. Training is an act of increasing the knowledge and skill of an employee for doing a particular job according to E.B. Flippo. Dale Yoder stated that training is a process by which man is fitted for the particular job he or she has to perform. Dale S. Beach quoted, training is an organized procedure by which people learn knowledge and skills for a definite purpose. Training is an open system. Training can be seen as a subsystem within the larger human resource unit which itself is a subsystem of the company, the organization's mission, strategies, organizational and employee needs, training budgets, staff, equipment and resources represent sources of input into the training subsystem. Training processes transform these inputs into usable output for the organization, which is improved knowledge, skill and attitude that is KSA and job performance. Looking at the training unit from an open systems perspective shows how interconnected training activities are with what is happening elsewhere in the organization. The organization invests money in the training function for which it expects a favorable return. Periodically the organization will examine the returns from training and determine whether the training system is working properly 
and what further investment is appropriate. Objectives of training Objective of training is to bring about change in the attitude of workers towards fellow workers, supervisors and the organization to impart new skills among workers so that they can handle a variety of jobs to improve the overall performance of workers training is essential to build a second line of able and competent executives who can handle work situations more responsibly and to increase the knowledge of workers in doing specific jobs need for training what are the conditions which led to need for training job requirements employees selected for a job might lack the qualifications required to perform the job effective performance on the job so new people require instructions in the form of training technology technology is changing very fast increasing use of fast changing techniques require training in new technology organizational viability in order to survive and grow an organization must continually adopt itself to the changing environment with increasing globalization liberalization expansion growth and diversification the firms must upgrade their capabilities internal mobility training becomes necessary when an employee moves from one job to another due to promotion and transfer the main areas in which training is provided is knowledge technical skills social skills techniques attitudes and experience types of training how many different types of training are available first is orientation training induction or orient training orientation training seeks to adjust newly appointed employee to the work environment it familiarizes the employee with the organizational policies rules regulations structures norms and behavior expected of the employee job training it refers to the training provided with a view to increase the knowledge and skills of an employee for improving performance on the job safety training training provided to minimize accidents and damage to the machinery is known as safety training promotional training it involves existing employees and enables them to perform higher level job by enhancing their their knowledge skills and abilities refresher training when existing techniques become obsolete due to development of better techniques employees have to be trained in the use of new methods and techniques remedial training such training is arranged to overcome the shortcomings in the behavior and performance of old employees remedial training should be conducted by psychological experts training need analysis identification of training needs is the first element and a critical one in the training activity success of any training function depends greatly on the correct identification of needs need identification exercise must continue on a regular basis it cannot be done once in a blue moon however need identification exercise can do real harm if needs are not met by conducting suitable training designing a training program in order to achieve the training objectives an appropriate training policy is necessary a training policy represents the commitment of top management to employ training it consists of rules and procedures concerning training a training policy is required to indicate the company's intention to develop its employees which also guides the design and implementation of training programs it identifies the critical areas where training is to be given on a priority basis these are the steps in designing a training program first step is responsibility for training we all know training is quite a strenuous process and it cannot be undertaken by one single department therefore the responsibility of training has to be given to the department or the line managers to be effective a training program should be properly organized 
along with good organization proper planning is also required. Selecting and motivating the target group is the next step because it is necessary to decide who is to be trained new or the old employees, skilled or unskilled employees, supervisors or executives, the type and methods to be used will depend upon the type of persons to be trained. It is also necessary to create a desire for learning. A climate conducive to learning can also be created through physical and psychological environment. Next step is developing training package. It is also important to develop a training package which should contain a detailed syllabus with proper sequencing of content and an appropriate mix of training methods. It will also cover the time period which may range from one week to few months. Next step is presentation. This is the action phase of training. Here the trainer tells, demonstrates and illustrates in order to put over the new knowledge and operations. However, before it the learner should be put at ease. It is necessary to explain why he is being taught to develop his interest in training. Fifth step, performance tryout. The trainee is asked to do the job several times slowly. His mistakes are corrected and if necessary the complicated steps are explained again. As soon as the trainee demonstrates that he can do the job slightly, he is put on his own and the training is over. Last step in this process is follow up. In this step, effectiveness of training program is assessed. The feedback generated through follow up will help to reveal weaknesses or errors if any. Necessary corrective action can be taken. If necessary instruction may be repeated until the trainee learns whatever has been taught to him. Follow up action reinforces the learning process. It also helps in designing future training programs. Evaluation of training effectiveness. The effectiveness of training and development activities can be assessed by the extent to which those activities produce desirable outcomes. Despite organizations expanding a great deal of effort, setting up training and development programs, comparatively less attention is paid to systematically evaluating their effectiveness. This lack of assessment may be partly due to extra cost and effort involved, but it also seems that many human resource practitioners are unaware of how and what to evaluate. The measurement of trainee satisfaction, that is reaction evaluation, which generally takes place at the end of a course, is by far the most popular and very often the only form of evaluation that is undertaken by organizations. Who is in charge of training? Training and development can be responsibility of professionals in human resources, human resources development or organization development. In a small companies, training is the responsibility of the founder and all the employees. When organizations grow to 100 employees, Typically, someone within the company is in charge of human resources, either as part of that or as his or her sole responsibility. At this point, training becomes one of the responsibilities of the employee in charge of human resources. In mid to large organizations, training can be the responsibility of HR professionals and can come from a separate function known as human resource development or organization development. Summary, training and development plays a very crucial role towards the growth and success of business by ensuring that the employees are equipped with right kind of skills, knowledge and abilities to perform their assigned tasks. By choosing the right type of training, we ensure that our employees possess the right skill set for the business and the same need to be continuously updated. In a sense, to meet current and future business demands, training and development process has assumed great significance. In the words of Mark Twain, there is nothing training cannot do 
Nothing is above its reach. It can turn bad morals to good. It can destroy bad principles and recreate good ones. It can lift man to angelship. It's a very famous Chinese proverb. There is another Chinese proverb which is, where vision is one year, cultivate flowers. Where vision is ten years, cultivate trees. Where vision is eternity, cultivate people. Thank you so much.